Let's pick up where we left off. After trudging through the mud to Netherfield, Elizabeth Bennet, our protagonist or main character, stays the night to remain at her sister's side. Jane Bennet has a shocking cold after riding to Netherfield in the rain. And in those days, a cold could be fatal, hence Elizabeth's mercy dash to Netherfield. That evening at dinner, Elizabeth feels uncomfortable around the Bingley sisters and sees straight through their fake niceties. Charles Bingley, on the other hand, shows genuine concern for Jane's health, which endears him to Elizabeth. When Elizabeth leaves dinner to check on Jane, Caroline and Mr and Mrs Hurst tear her to shreds. They're outraged by her lack of decorum in trudging all that way and showing up in a muddy dress. Caroline implies her unladylike arrival must have dampened Darcy's admiration of her fine eyes. He surprises her by saying he likes them all the better. But he hasn't let go of all his snobbish tendencies. He says he would not approve if his own sister behaved that way and agrees that the Bennet sisters' low social standing makes them poor marriage prospects. Later in the evening, Darcy and Caroline share their demanding opinion of what makes a woman accomplished, and Elizabeth mocks their ridiculously high standards. In her absence, Caroline accuses Elizabeth of trying to endear herself to men by putting down women. But it's clear to Darcy that Caroline is doing just that. The next morning, Mrs Bennet arrives along with Lydia and Kitty to check on Jane. While Jane is a little better, she isn't quite well enough to come home. Mrs Bennet is more than happy for Jane to stay at Netherfield, at the centre of Charles Bingley's attention. So Mrs Bennet slightly exaggerates Jane's illness to Bingley over breakfast. Bingley enthusiastically agrees that Jane must stay until she has recovered, and Mrs Bennet takes the opportunity to gush to him about her daughter's good qualities. It would be so nice if she was less obvious, but Mrs Bennet doesn't do subtlety. When Elizabeth turns the conversation towards Bingley's good character and her general interest in studying others, Darcy chimes in with a pompous remark. The countryside is lacking in anyone worth studying. This deeply offends Mrs Bennet's pride, prompting a rant in defence of country folk like herself. Soon enough, Mrs Bennet moves the conversation back to Jane and how men have even written poetry for her. Darcy says he sees poetry as the food of love. But Elizabeth corrects him. Without love already present, poetry is meaningless. He only smiles in return, while Elizabeth sweats. Why is he acting so strange around her? Mrs Bennet finally leaves, taking Lydia and Kitty with her. But on her way out, Lydia makes Bingley keep his promise of throwing a ball at Netherfield Park. He vows he will once Jane has fully recovered. That evening, Elizabeth watches with amusement as Darcy writes a letter and Caroline Bingley fawns over his every move. The less Darcy gives, the harder she tries. When the conversation turns to a discussion of modesty, there is some intense verbal sparring between Elizabeth and Darcy. Later, Elizabeth notices Darcy's eyes fixed on her. She's confused. Is he admiring her or mentally picking her apart? She soon decides she doesn't really care what he thinks anyway. Little does she know that Darcy is staring because he's bewitched by her. But can Darcy get over his prejudices against her low social standing? Soon, Jane is well enough to be brought downstairs, where she is lavished with attention from Mrs Hurst and Caroline. Bingley scarcely talks to anyone else but Jane, which Elizabeth observes with delight. 
Later in the evening, Caroline is again vying for Darcy's attention. She pretends to read because Darcy is reading and declares her ambitions for a large library in a house of her own. But still, Darcy ignores her. Watch out, Kaz. Your desperation is showing. The conversation gets interesting, however, when Elizabeth openly passes judgment on Darcy's character. She jokes that he's flawless. Just ask him. Ironically, poking at his pride. Sparks fly back and forth between Elizabeth and Darcy on the nature of vanity and pride. Elizabeth declares that Darcy's real defect is hating everybody. He smiles and suggests that maybe she hasn't got him all figured out just yet. Tired of being left out of their obvious flirting, Caroline begins to play the piano. And it's just as well, because Darcy's worried he's being too obvious in his attention towards Elizabeth. Later, Elizabeth writes to her mother, asking to use the carriage to come home. But Mrs Bennet wants Jane to stay at Netherfield for as long as possible. They will have to ask Mr Bingley to use his carriage. Bingley agrees but is sad to see Jane leave. But to Darcy, this is happy news. He is thrown by his attraction to a lower-class girl like Elizabeth. So he decides to ignore her until she leaves. Real mature, Darcy. On arriving home, Mrs Bennet is disappointed to see them so soon – but Mr. Bennet is glad to have his two most sensible daughters home at last. Later, Mr. Bennet receives a letter from his cousin, Mr. Collins, the next male relative to inherit Longbourn. This greatly upsets Mrs. Bennet, who thinks he's stealing their home, not quite understanding how inheritance law works. Mr. Collins' letter is polite to the point of absurdity. He humbly brags about his status as a clergyman and his connection to the high-ranking Lady Catherine de Bourgh and asks to stay at Longbourn a short while. His pompous writing strikes Elizabeth as bizarre. Mr. Bennet agrees and is excited to meet this silly relative of his. Mr. Collins arrives and proves to be a grave and stately young man, formal to the point of awkwardness. He tells them he's sympathetic towards their dire inheritance situation and hints that he's even prepared to marry one of them, painting himself as quite the hero. That evening at dinner, Mr. Collins rattles on about his patroness, Lady Catherine de Bourgh, clearly enjoying the attention of someone of her high rank. He also sings the praises of her daughter, Miss de Bourgh, and her beauty despite her sickliness. He prides himself on his ability to craft just the right compliments to please them. Mr Bennet is quietly delighted that his cousin is as ridiculous as he'd hoped. Very soon after arriving, Mr. Collins settles on Jane as his first choice of bride. But Mrs. Bennet soon steers him away from that option, as she expects Jane to be engaged soon. But no bother, he quickly settles for his second choice, Elizabeth. Let's see what she has to say about that. Mr. Collins accompanies four of the Bennet sisters on a walk to Meryton, where they encounter the handsome Mr. Denny. He's an officer acquaintance of Lydia's, recently returned from London. Mr Denny introduces Lydia to his friend, Mr Wickham, a strikingly handsome young man who's recently joined the militia. The Bennet sisters begin chatting with Wickham and are thoroughly charmed when suddenly Bingley and Darcy ride past. Only Elizabeth notices Wickham and Darcy's expressions on seeing each other one turning white, the other red. What's going on here, she wonders. Darcy and Bingley depart, and the company visit Mrs Phillips, Mrs Bennet's sister, 
Enamoured with Wickham, Lydia and Kitty try to get him and Mr Denny to join them, but they politely decline. Mr Collins must have been glad about that. Once inside, the attention is back on him as Mrs Phillips receives him warmly, even inviting him and all the Bennets to dinner the following evening. How will Elizabeth react if Mr Collins proposes to her? And what will her mother do if she declines the offer? Then there's the secret history between Mr Darcy and Mr Wickham. Elizabeth smells drama. Stay tuned for the reveal. We hope you enjoyed this Schooling Online production. For more easy lessons, check out our other videos.